officially graduated to page 19. And we have, what's up, Shaka? Good morning, good sir. Peace and a great near to you. I seen the video last night that you did with, um, with Pharaoh. You know what would be better rather than Facebook Live? If you taped it and put it on YouTube for him. You know what I'm saying? Give him his, you know, either give him, put him on your channel or give him his own channel. You know, because he did a real good job. And, you know, tell him I, I, I sent him a message. Keep up the work. Keep up the good work. That was some good stuff. Because, you know, them kids love toy reviews. They want to know what they're getting and stuff like that. So we got to keep, keep our babies involved. You know what I'm saying? So, um... And like I said, if you don't have the channel loaded up to, I load it on the same one I load my daughters up on. Just You just got to email it to me. Alright, so, I'm kind of, my energy is down. You know, maybe something will spark me and, and get me up. But right now, I'm, um, this is day 19 of the fast. And this is the phase of the fast where I don't drink no water, won't eat no food for next today. Kaumba and Imani at 9 p.m. 9 p.m. Right? So, we're gonna do a ceremonial toast. I'm gonna pour, we're gonna lift the glass, and then I'll pour the glass. I got a nice little fern plant over here that I'm gonna. Uh, Put some water on because I don't look like nobody been watering this plant. So I'm gonna put some put some holy water on it. But today on the show, we're gonna be talking about uh cacao, which is from uh which is the tree from which uh chocolate comes from. We're gonna be talking about miso soup, and we're gonna be talking about um we're going to be talking about chia seeds, right? Because now that I got my body to a point where it's at now, I am going to start um, incorporating more culturally appropriate foods, seafood type stuff, um, uh, miso soup. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find a way to make that culturally appropriate. You know what I'm saying? But... The uh, chia seeds. Uh, we're gonna look at some raw chocolate. We're gonna look at a whole bunch of other stuff that we've been covering over the last few months to try to, you know, what I'm saying, build my body back up because I done broke it down. Right now, at first I was a uh, good, great day, brother Kwame. Uh, what's up, brother Nehemiah? Uh, so I was. Uh, I done broke my body down. Um, now I'm going to build it back up. But like I said, I'm just, I'm going with the African Heritage Diet. You know what I'm saying? And like I'm going to incorporate stuff like some miso soup in there as well. I'm going to change up what I would do for breakfast. Because when I come out of this, I'm not going to be intermittent fasting for a couple of weeks. So um, I'm going to eat me some breakfast, probably some lunch, some dinner or However, my body adjusts or whatever my body needs because I'm going to have to build up because, like I said, I was light before. I was 168 when I started. Now, my brother's about, I'm probably about 150 now. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I want to thank everybody for, for, for tuning in now and later. And we're going to do the toast. Um, as I said before, I can't drink the water right now. But this plant surely can. So what I'll do is we will toast, lift it up, and I will, I will, I will pour on the plant. And I'm going to remember to buy fly swatter because this damn fly that got on my last nerve. Do you know that this fly, while I was doing a promo for my show, the fly walked up on the camera lens. Like, it was trying to steal my life. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what the, uh, the you know? I bring them out, bring them out. 
Bring them out, bring them out. Bring them out, bring them out. Great near to everybody out there, yo. Great near. I am on day 19. I'm holding up. Ah, I'm a little bit tired, but I'm still strong. Ah, you know, I got stuff to do with my kids today. Tomorrow. Now, this is the challenge, right? Tomorrow, one of my brothers told me there's a sweat lodge. And you know I'm trying to be in the place. But I don't know. You know what I'm saying? It'll be tomorrow evening. So then, you know, I come straight home, take a shower, go to bed, and struggle through Imani. I'm not, I'm not in shape to do no push-ups right now. But I still got to do my workout. Um, So... If you got those ancestors out there you want me to toast, post them up. If you got um, issues that you want us to toast at the end, toast for at the end, put them up. Family, I'm consistently thinking about how we as a people can make a come up. You know what I'm saying? And one of the things that, that, that constantly stick with me is that we are not plugging into the resources of our ancestors. We are not plugging in to our ancestors. We are not plugging in to our ancestors. We have been spooked out of our, our spiritual heritage. We don't let these people fool us into believing that um, um, supposedly ghosts are evil and, 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 and zombies and shit like that. Rather than embracing our cultural heritage of ancestral, um, and ancestral upliftment, ancestral praise, you know what I'm saying, ancestral connection, rather than us grasping that. And we got to understand this is a weapon that's being used to keep us where we are because it was the ancestors that helped people raise up in Haiti, right? This is why they had to turn us into, this, this is why they had to throw all this spook shit at us, right? Because one of the things that um, the whole goddamn revolution started off of a ritual. I mean, I'm, I mean, I, I don't see how people can't see the connection. It started off a ritual, right? They started a ritual, and by the time the goddamn ritual was over, my fault, the God blessed ritual was over, shit, the island was on fire. You know what I'm saying? And we got to understand, you have to break a people away from their culture. You got to get them to start doing culturally inappropriate things. You have to get them to embrace your culture so that you can control them. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're embracing all these different cultures, but we're not looking at where we came from. You know what I'm saying? We're eating all types of food, but we're not looking at what food was basically developed for us by nature herself, by the universe herself, by God itself. You know what I'm saying? We're not looking into that shit. Right. So so because we're not plugging into that, right? And let me tell you something else I found out. And I'm, I'm going to keep on harping on this, man. Even with the microbiome, right? For those that don't know, this is the gut bacteria. They call it the gut bacteria, yeast, fungi, and viruses because your body does have that shit in it and there's more of it than it is of you. Well, actually, it is you. You know what I'm saying? Now, but let me tell you this. They have done studies. I'm in I'm in a book right now. I can't remember the name of the book. Um, it's an audio book, so I don't feel like pulling it up right now. Well, anyway, they talk about studies they did with the microbiome. And everybody's microbiome is different. But certain groups, not even certain groups, groups of people's microbiome are close enough alike that they have to eat similar foods. Haven't I been telling you about a culturally appropriate diet? Right? Culturally appropriate. Haven't I said breathing culturally appropriately? Movement culturally appropriately? You know what I'm saying? We got to start thinking culturally appropriate thoughts. You know what I'm saying? Because all of this affects our microbiome. How I feel, right? 
Not only how I feel affects it, but how it feels affects me. So if I'm taking in shit that it can't use, or I'm taking in shit that's making um, one stronger than the other, right? I'm going to be aggressive. If I got them worn inside of me, and I don't have the balance, I don't have my eye inside of me, shit. Come on, family. We got to do this. Now, Kwanzaa is, Kwanzaa is approaching. We are in the seventh month. Kwanzaa is in five months. Now, what does that mean? I honestly believe that after this eclipse, right? August 21st, right? You know what I'm saying? I honestly believe we're moving into a whole different phase in time, or at least we can. See, because a lot of people, this is the problem. A lot of y'all waiting for prophecies to be fulfilled rather than being the fulfiller of prophecies, right? We have a solar eclipse coming, right? This is a sign for us to really start getting it together. And I think Kwanzaa is one of the major vehicles that we can use to do that. We also have other holidays. We got the Malcolm X, we got Malcolm X holiday. We got the... Um, at the end of August, we got you know, somewhere around August, we got uh, Mark, we do Marcus Garvey, we can do Harriet Tubman, we got a whole bunch of we got a whole bunch of cele celebratory days that we can have, right? And the point is, we have to start being prophecy rather than waiting for prophecy to be fulfilled, right? That's a whole nother weapon that's being used against you. I give you a book telling you and giving you instructions on what's supposed to happen. This this is supposed to happen. This got to happen first. Then this got to happen. Then this got to happen. Why I go around and I run the world, right? You waiting for the signs and shit. I'm running the world because I realize really that in order for in order for anything to happen, I got to make it happen, right? But I got you believing that you got to wait for it to happen. Come on, family. That's that's getting pimped at a whole nother level. You know what I'm saying? I fuck that. You know? Um oh, Queen Ma, Queen Mother Ma more, that's right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we got a whole bunch of days. We could we got we got holidays. We could set up a calendar, right? Get people, you know, I mean we need economic engines. Kwanzaa is one of those engines, I believe. You know what I'm saying? Juneteenth is one of those engines, I believe, right? You know what I'm saying, black folks? You got to start, you know, you got to start investing in our, we got to start investing in our festivals, right? When we go to these things, we got to be ready ready to break bread, especially Comedic New Year in early August. There you go. There you go. We got to be willing to break bread when we go to these events. We got to be willing to share bread because the one thing I had to ask at the Kwanzaa meeting was this. When are we going to start taxing ourselves? We allow ourselves to be taxed so that we can support the war machine that's running around the world acting crazy with the great pumpkin and shit, right? We, we allow them to tax us. When are we going to start taxing ourselves? And I think these festivals are self-taxes, right? Well, we can start building up organizations and building up um, individual business people at these festivals, right? And have a central body that runs these festivals. And rather than worrying about the government, we have these in the, these, these, these things worry about putting on the festivals, raising the money, keep the festival going so that they can bring a better quality of edutainment to the events, right? To attract more people, to attract more, to bring more value to the community and the community will invest money back into that. And eventually we could start having our own centers. We could build our own center so that we could have these festivals. But while we're waiting for the festival, we could use it for other events. Both you, both your newly made for a minute, 
bread and bread we can spend with each other for services and goods. Damn right. Listen, I'm one one of I had to make two batches. One of them is popping off. I'm about to experiment on how to make the other one pop off right now because I'm doing the sourdough. For those that don't know, sourdough is a lie, right? You have what you call the starter. And I got to keep that shit alive just like I got to keep the, the, the scoby alive. So I ain't got time for pets. You know what I'm saying? Peace, uh, Mr. Brian Tyner. I'm just, I'm just ranting right now. We're about to do the libations. But we have means of business because culture is more than just about well actually it's about clothes it's about food it's about um it's about all those things right but it that shit has to be made by the people if it's not made by the people it's not cultural gucci is not part of our fucking culture because gucci is a italian motherfucker making money off of us you know what I'm saying? This, this, this is what people don't understand. That's not part of our culture. Right? So if we're going to be talking about clothes and we're going to be talking about styles and shit, you know what I'm saying? We got to control that shit. That's when it becomes cultural. Food, right? There are certain cultural foods. I, listen, I'm, I, I challenge you. I challenge you to find, listen, my wife is from Ghana, right? She hasn't bought rice from a Kroger's or a, a, a Walmart since she started going shopping. She goes to the African store. She don't buy she don't buy any of, of the food that she eats that connect her to home from anybody else but the African stores. I mean I don't even understand if y'all know what the fuck I'm saying to you. Right? See because I we I need we need to start thinking on a whole nother level, right? We we thinking that it's about fair play and shit. There's, we, we thinking that there's a level. There is no level. We can't never get on somebody's level in their culture. When we start riding our own culture, that's when we level up with motherfuckers. Why? Because we are producing. We are producing. Remember, a nation, and even we can say a culture, is a stable, historically developed community of people with territory, economic life, distinctive culture, and a language in common. Right? But when you break down culture and you look at culture, culture is part of maintaining that territory. Culture is what maintains that territory. Culture educates and, and, and helps bring life to the territory. And from life in that territory, it brings the economic life. Right? Culture has to produce an economic life for the people. It has to. Because culture is what protects us. It, 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 it helps motivate the military. It helps motivate the business. It stimulates the business. It helps people understand the politics. It prepares people for war. See, but we're looking at culture differently. Ah, oh, it's just how oh, we dance and shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't want you to look at European culture. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they dance. They kick it, right? But I bet you they militarily preparing. Right? Right? That's part of the culture. Right? And let me tell you something. I keep on going back to this. Like Herges, who was the founder of what we know as Sparta. Right? Sparta before Lycurgus was sort of like us. Right? Disorganized. Lycurgus went out searching other cultures. Right? Because he said there has to be something better than this. He went out. They say he went into Africa. He went into Africa and he went to other countries. He saw how someone was living, how someone was wasting, and he picked the best out of every system. And he brought it back to Sparta. And he started by training 50. He trained them in the way of Sparta. And he changed the culture. And he developed the culture. And he got rid of the economic system as it was. And, 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 and instilled another one. And he made the culture militarily focused. 
he studied that from you. And then, now, we got motherfuckers at the movie 300 like, Oh, that was dope. The Spartans was a shit. Hey, let me tell you something. The founder of that came and studied you. But I, I, you don't read. The story is in Parallel Lives by Patrocles or something like that. Parallel Lives, Patrocles or something like that. Right? Because you get a lot of mentions of people just slipping off to our to where we were, so that they could learn some shit, right? But you don't you wouldn't know that if you didn't study it. If you if you running from your culture and shit, you don't understand that, right? So here we go. First, we lift up the glass to the Creator by whatever name you choose to call that Creator. We call that great energy down in us, even though we know it's already here. But we wanna we wanna call it anyway. We wanna call this energy from around us so that we could feel it. So in this day, in this day of Mia, we could build a better us. All right, so we lift the glass and we say our shade. From there, we move to my favorite part, our personal ancestors. We toast our grandmothers and our grandfathers, our fathers and our mothers, our uncles and our aunts, our nieces and our nephews, our friends and our cousins. We toast all those that made the transition before us. We thank them for touching our lives. We thank them for the special part they played in our life. We thank them for the lessons they gave us in life. We lift them up and we thank them and we remember them on a consistent basis, not just during holidays, right? Because those of us that sit up here at this toast, we remember our ancestors on a regular basis because we understand the importance of feeding our ancestors. Yes, we feed our ancestors with our thoughts. We feed our ancestors with our praise. We feed our ancestors with the memories. We feed our ancestors when we are applying that wisdom. And we remember that wisdom and we're giving them credit. So we lift up our personal ancestors. Because if you don't lift up your personal ancestors, who will? If you don't do it, who will? If you don't teach your children to do it, who going to lift you up when you're done? Not done, but when you make your transition. And you need your energy. And you need your assistance. Like I told y'all before, I had a dream. And an ancestor came to me and told me they couldn't help us because they were starving. Starving. Everybody else is paying homage to their ancestors. We, we come together for a festival and pour some water. And that's beautiful. But where is the fucking temple? Where is the monuments? That we built, that we put money together and built, that we sacrifice. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the African openers, the tree of life, say, if it is not yours, it cannot be a sacrifice. You know what I'm saying? Have we have we taken some Kwanzaa money or some Juneteenth money and raised money from there, right? And 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 got people to contribute to us erecting a $150,000 statue somewhere on some land that we own. If we don't do if we don't do nothing but own a small plot of land. You know what I'm saying? We salute and we put up a monument to our ancestors. Why? Why is the monument important? Because our ancestors can gather there. It's like a focal point through which they can constantly receive energy from us. Not just when I get up and toast. See, the toast is a replacement for something we should have been doing a long, long time ago. On a daily basis. But yo, so we remember them. I'm going to go down my family line. Um, you said, my grandma made some delicious sourdough bread. Damn, I missed that. Alright, I'm going to... Um, I'm about to get in the sourdough business. You know what I'm saying? Ain't even a business. So, uh, you know, not yet. But you you already know, Kwame. Just put the word out. After after I sample it and if I survive. <laughs> after I sample it and if I live and you want to try some, brother. But listen, the sourdough bread is just the beginning, right? Because... I'm messing with the nuts. 
I'm messing with the chia seeds. I'm looking at the cow cow. I'm looking at the honey, right? I'm looking at forming a, a healthy honey cake, right? With, with, with all the stuff that we've been talking about. You know what I'm saying? A replacement for uh, candy bars and shit. Because I told you, J's goal is to help in, to help in all gut-related diseases within our tribe and eventually the community. And if the world want to partake, the world. You know what I'm saying? Because the issue is I got to start where I'm at. So I'm still building tribe right now, right? But everybody that's, that's, that's with me, right? One of the things we want to either help people get over some of the issues that they have or to sidestep some of the issues that may be coming because of the, the dietary ways we live, right? Because of the way we breathe, because of the lack of proper movement, right? So, enough of that. All right, so I lift up Miles Brown, Ms. Ann Robin, the Texana Davis, Hermit Brown, Senior, Rosie Lee, Tilly, Georgia, and William Walker, Chris, and Fanny Gasson, Aunt Lena, Uncle Chris, Geneva Brown, Cleveland Brown, Margaret Ellis, Wash Ellis, Cecil Ellis, Alvira Brown, Gina Gaines, Herman Brown the second. Barbara Twiggs, Jamon Jones, John Fillard, Jeremiah Tappan, Elder, Elder Hairston, Elder Donaldson, Elder Farmer, Elder Millie, Dr. Marianne Williams, Tony Clark, Pastor Yusef Weston, No More X, Sepat Ma Ra. We lift up our glass and we say, Ashe. From there we toast this moment. We are in Nia, family. Nia, this is the day of purpose. Nia is also. I got to excuse me, my mind ain't working like it should be. True justice, right? True justice, right? True justice, right? True justice, right? Nia is also the amatic principle of balance. Uh, don't worry about it. All right. So we toast this day. Remember, your power always rests in this day. You always have choices. We lift up the glass and we say our shade. From there, we move on to our children, our children's children, on to infinity. We toast them. We toast them now so that they could toast us later. We build for them now so that they can have a place to pour for us later. All right? We lift up the glass and we say our shade. From there, I toast you. Any issues that you want me to, to, to toast, any issues that you want the group to focus on, post it up. We got people coming in after this because everybody can't get up at 4.15. All right? So we toast and we say, Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. I wish you peace, power, peace, power, joy in 100 years. I was about to drink. All right. So, um, oh, I might have an announcement coming soon. There may be a community workshop that's going to be life changing, popping off in August, popping off in August. All right. So um, this is Brother Hot Tim. Make sure that you hit me up and get on the Nguza Saba Challenge. Life changing. I'm telling you, life changing too. Next, if you want that ambrosia, right, hit me up at gum.co forward slash that ambrosia right i done posted it up a thousand times i post it up on my timeline once again right boom both of those i post them up and if you want to keep up with me on this fast or find out what i did to make it through some of the stuff that i used to make it through right or some of the adventures while i was on this right doing this 21 day because after this one 
I got a whole nother 21 day challenge I have to do, but that one is personal, right? I talk with it with the people on my updates. You go to gum.co forward slash G and J update. Alright? Um, all that stuff is is free, you know, my fault. You know, you got to make a donation in order, not even a donation, you got to trade with me in order to get that ambrosia. You support the journey, the journey supports you, right? All that stuff, if you want to give, you can. If not, that's cool. All right, but yo, I'm saying good morning. I'm going to pour. And with that, I say peace. I'm out, Facebook.